aka back day. When I do one arm with a uh, with a cable instead of both arms in pull down. So in this video, we're gonna be going over Sam Sulek's camera gear, his lens, his camera, his microphone, and his tripod, and any other accessories that he uses to film his videos. As you can see, I'm gonna be doing some in camera in video evidence from his YouTube channel and showing you proof that that is, the, that is the correct lens or correct item that he uses showing in video evidence. Let's get in the video and let's make this video short. So we're gonna start off with his tripod because his camera and lens I find is the least important thing. So I'm gonna save that in the end of the video, but don't worry, we will talk about it. So number one, starting with his tripod, he uses kind of a weird type of tripod but the more I, I think about it I'm like damn it's actually it's super portable and it's easy to it's it's easy to bring around so I, I kind of understand why you would use a tripod so the tripod he uses is the Ulanzi MT49 carbon fiber tripod the reason I know it's this exact tripod is because of the tip of the tripod on top is the same as this one and the way it holds to the floor, it's different than a traditional tripod. It has one stick facing all the way up. And I find that's very useful because it's super portable and easy to adjust. The problem with this tripod is that it doesn't come with a ball head. So it doesn't come with adjusting adjuster on top. But the main one he uses the most is the Ulanzi ball head. But to be honest, you can use basically any ball head. I find the tripod is what I find the tripod is what makes it easier for him specifically for this type of shooting style a lot better for ball heads you can find tons of other type of ball heads because you're not really adjusting it you don't need a handle like he has in this video you just need something that's stationary so a regular ball head you can get that anywhere but the tripod it was hard to find a tripod like this so that tripod if you want to if you want something similar or similar results as him you probably should get this type of tripod so number two, so the microphone he uses is the new Rode Wireless Pro. What he used to use is these microphones over here that I'm using right now. These are honestly really, really good. It's about $150 cheaper than these ones, but um, he got a new microphone. Maybe Rode sponsored him and probably sent him that microphone for free. But the one that he has is the one with the black Road logo on front over here. So that's what he uses. It's the Rode Wireless Pro, but honestly, you'll get really good results with, even with this one. This is the version one. That's the Pro version that, honestly, I don't even, it's probably just better like audio, I guess. I, I don't know, it's not that crazy, but all I know is that it is the more expensive version. It comes with Pro features like shooting in RAW or uncompressed audios but with this one it does more than enough as long as you're you know adjusting the, vo the volume correctly then yeah it shoots very good audio so that's a that's the microphone he uses the Rode Wireless Pro and that's pretty much it he doesn't use anything else it's perfect he, he puts it under his cap and I know you can also put it in your shirt like this if you want to I actually have like a magnetic thing I can just do that you can leave it in your shirt like this if you want. And um, yeah, for him, he puts it in his hat. I, I'm pretty sure it's just better because with movement, sometimes with your shirt, it can kind of like fall off and stuff. But um, yeah, for best quality, you want it to be really facing your mouth. So that's why for me, that's why I'm holding it because I know the quality is gonna be a lot better. So that's for his microphone. And now let's go to his camera gear. So his camera gear, like I said, I wasn't sure if he was in, if he was using a full frame camera or a APS-C camera. Basically, a full frame is just more money, costs more. It's more professional. Um, but yeah, he's using a 16-35 G Master lens with the Sony ZV-E1. So yeah, it's a super expensive setup. That lens is around three thousand dollars Canadian because I'm based in Canada. And that camera is around $3,000 Canadian because I'm based in Canada. I put the US pricing over here. So yeah, it's very, very expensive. It's very, very expensive setup. Um, in my opinion, 
if you're a beginner, you really don't need this type of camera. It's, it's really like, like insane. Like it's very, very expensive. Um, I'm actually shooting it right now. <laughs> I have the same lens. I'm gonna show you guys right here. It is the 1635. So this is the same exact lens. 1635, I'm gonna show you proof of what it shows there on a camera. It has a 1635 and he has a full frame camera. I have a Sony a7C, which is a lot cheaper than a ZV-E1, but the reason why the ZV-E1 is super expensive is because it can shoot 4K 120 FPS and it just has more cinematic settings, I would say. But personally, if you're shooting videos like this, you don't need 4K 120, you just need 4K 30. He shoots his video in 4K, but he's not doing any slow-mo or anything like that. So it's honestly not that necessary. And yeah, I mean, the lens is probably the most important thing if you're, if you think you're, if you think you're going to be doing this long term, then yes, it's a very good investment to get the most expensive lens because it's something you'll use forever. And that's why me personally, I bought this lens because I know I'll be using this lens a lot. And yeah, that's why I bought it. But if you want, you know, if you're on a budget, you can go with the APS-C lens and um, a APS-C camera and yeah, just go with the ZV-E10, not the ZV-E1. It's like one third the price and equally as good camera quality. Not many people would even notice to be honest, but yeah, that's the camera he uses. And now for accessories, he uses a cage. Um, I, I have a cage on mine as well. The reason I have a cage is so I can mount the camera vertically so I can shoot content like this. Him, he doesn't really use it. He doesn't really shoot vertically. I don't, I believe he doesn't post on TikTok. I think other people just post for him, but you have the option to shoot vertically, but also it adds protection to the camera. So that's probably the main thing. I don't think he's rough with it, but let's say if someone knocks you off of your tripod and your camera falls, the cage will definitely help with the protection. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what camera gear Sam Select uses. I hope this video wasn't too long. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, comment down below. Or if you guys want me to cover another YouTuber, comment down below. Uh, I know I've been really, I've been receiving a lot of requests recently. I'm gonna have to start getting on those. Um, but yeah, basically the reason why I'm doing a video on Sam Solix because I found his shooting style very original. It, it brings back like nostalgic vibes. I don't know why. It's just like very raw and real so that's why i kind of like it and i that's why i really wanted to make this video and um yeah it's like not distracting you know it's not like a regular vlog guy like a guy holding his camera doing this you know so that's why me personally i kind of really wanted to do it and uh yeah i mean he's growing he's getting consistent amount of views as well so it really shows that people like this type of content but yeah that's pretty much it if you guys like this video make sure to subscribe make sure to like because that helps out a lot and uh yeah honestly message me on instagram if if it's like urgent if it's like a youtuber you really want me to cover message me on instagram i'm pretty active there too and uh yeah that's pretty much it i'll catch you guys next time peace